So if you saw video number six already, uh, I said there that that would be the last video of the introductory series. But what happened about an hour or two after I had uploaded that video is Dr. Carol Holman uh, in our department. She's a professor of pathology and the head of our hematopathology division. Uh, she sent me an interesting case uh, for these educational series that we are planning. And uh, that case made two really great points, uh, provided two great lessons. So in true pathology style, I had to issue this video chapter six addendum. <laughs> so what I mean by that is if you remember from video six, if you've seen it, I made this point about this case where this red population is really a reactive germinal center population, right? CD10 positive. Uh, it is CD20 brighter than the uh, other, you know, mantle zone B cells here. Uh, just uh, reactive follicular hyperplasia and it's FMC7 positive. And then when you come to kappa lambda, you see a nice streaming to kappa and streaming to lambda. And so I warned you, don't call this kappa light chain restricted. But I also said that if it's a CD20 positive population, so it should be mature B cells, but it is dead negative for kappa and lambda, then you should be bold and call it a B cell lymphoma. And so after, uh, after I said that, then I get this uh, case from Dr. Holman and so I would like to do that with you live, uh, live analysis. And here we go. So let's open the couple of tubes that are most relevant for the educational point that I'm making. So I'm going to load uh, this B cell tube, right? So you got CD19 versus forward scatter here. So I'm gonna start coloring all the B cells blue. Uh, and then we go through our cleaning. Not much to clean, lots of lymphocytes in the specimen. But then we come to our kappa lambda evaluation right here. I'm going to blow it up a little bit and see what, uh, what do you think. So you got two clusters here, a lambda cluster, a kappa cluster, and clearly a dead negative population, okay? So let's make sure we are dealing with polytypic B cells here as we suspect we might. So I'm going to overlay them with different colors so they get painted. They change their colors basically. And so now you can see that it is a <clears throat> polytypic B lymphocyte background, right? right there, uh, about, about a one-to-one -one ratio or so. So let's, let's focus in, in the interest of time, onto this blue population. Before that, before leaving this completely, uh, we, we can clean, clean these populations up a little bit more here. Let me remember the color blue. Then what I'm gonna do is clean up our reactive lymphocytes a little bit. White. I'm going to... Okay, so that, that, that's sort of the story. And what you can see is that our B cell population here in blue, let me actually merge it into a red, so you can probably see it better, is CD20 brighter than our background B lymphocytes, right? And it is also entirely FMC7 positive and CD23 negative, showing very nice uh, follicle center cell differentiation type phenotype. So let's just focus in on this red population. It seems to be small to medium sized, and maybe a few largest cells as well. So, but it's dead negative for kappa lambda. So what do you do with something like this? Now, of course, the other 
main thing I forgot to say, it's not only is it CD20 brighter compared to the regular B cells, it's also CD10 positive. So this is exactly the same phenotype that I just showed you for uh, germinal center B cells, except the kappa lambda is dead negative. And so, uh, as, as I said in the other video, I'm sticking to my gun saying, if it is a CD20 bright population and you're seeing it dead negative and not streaming, you might get nervous, but you should be bold and essentially make the call that this is a B cell lymphoma and with the CD10 positivity, you're dealing with the follicle center cell process. Now, if this was CD10 negative, uh, it would be even more certain that this is a lymphoma. In the context that this is CD10 positive, one may think, okay, maybe these are follicle center cells similar to the other case, and maybe I'm not seeing the streaming. Am I going to be bold to call this? So if you feel nervous, there's one more trick you can use in a case like this. So notice how this axis says kappa mono and lambda mono. What this means is this is a monoclonal reagent that we use to stain kappa and a monoclonal reagent that we use to stain lambda. And sometimes uh, it helps to use the other reagents. So sometimes some epitopes of tumors uh, can be missed by these monoclonal antibodies and get caught by the polyclonal antibodies. Uh, we have seen a few cases where the reverse can also happen, but typically, if you see kappa and lambda negative using the monoclonal reagent, you can order an extra marker tube, or maybe you already incorporated into your panel checking kappa lambda with the polyclonal reagents. So that's what Dr. Holman did in this case. And that is our second uh, lesson from this case. And I think this was, yeah, this was the tube that she did. Uh, this, this was done a little bit later and a lot more events were collected, looks like that looks a little junky, but here we can uh, color these B cells again. I'm going to take away the highlight. Okay, so here, here's our B cell population. And then may, maybe we just hone in on these CD10 positive cells. There's a little bit of variability on the 19. Yeah. So the 19 positives are the background B cells. In fact, we can we can confirm that. So here we clean it like this. So we got CD19 positive, a little bit of overlap here. Maybe I can clean, clean them up a little bit more. You can see that those, as we know from the other uh, uh, tube as well, they are splitting very nicely into kappa and lambda. Let me make sure if I overlay that by red, then they become white. And so now I'm looking for a white to cyan ratio, blue and you can see 3.1 to 2.8. So no problem with these CD10 negative uh, B cells, they are polytypic in nature. And now we can hone in on our green population and you can see very nicely that green population is lambda light chain restricted as brought out by this polyclonal reagent for lambda. So that's the other lesson that uh, sometimes you can see the monoclonality better when you use the polyclonal reagent if you don't see it from the monoclonal reagent. But, 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 even if this polyclonal reagent had shown a completely dead negative, then I want to encourage you to think that this is a tumor and not call it a, an indefinite or undecided flow study. Okay, so the, those were the two points. One is dead negative, 20 positive, think tumor. And if uh, immunoglobulin is missed by monoclonal reagents in some tumors, it can still show very nice monoclonality when you use a polyclonal uh, reagent for staining these surface light chains. So that's basically the point. Uh, thank you. I think now we are done <laughs> with the introductory series. From next week, we are going to do 
lots of cases, and we are going to do it in an interesting way. So uh, we will wait for next week to reveal uh, that surprise. Okay, thank you.